Okay, everybody, I've been joined by David from Megalith Games to talk, well, obviously, God Slayer. So, uh, we're going to give you a quick introduction to the world and have a quick chat about what's happening with the Kickstarter you guys have online at the moment. Yes? Yep, that's right. Okay, uh, first things first, what is the basic backstory for God Slayer? Because this is a game that's been out since 2006? Uh, 2012. Oh, End of 2012. 2012. Oh, yep. sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I'm not that old. So <laughs> you just, hang on, hang on. This year I turned thirty-two. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the age. The knees are starting to go, man. Oh. Okay, so Godslayer uh, details. Come on. The, the okay, world. so basically, we wanted to stay away from high fantasy and Renaissance. Mm -hmm. So I, I created a, a world which is based around low fantasy, mm. uh, set in a kind of Bronze Age mythological world. Mm -hmm. So. Um, all of the cultures in the world are based on some kind of classical or ancient culture on Earth. Yeah. So we have kind of like the Greek style faction, Roman yeah. style faction, but everything has a twist. So the Greeks are um, like uh, god worshippers and have a lot of magic. Of the, course. The, the Roman style faction have undead and alchemy. Ooh, so, necromancy. Yeah. So um, that's that's the basic idea, the basic concept of the game. Mm -hmm. um, the world has, it, it's actually, there's about nine worlds, and they're flat, essentially. Flat chunks of rock floating in space. Okay. Uh, it takes, the game takes place on uh, uh, one of these worlds called Caladorn, and most of the action right now is in the continent of Gorn. Mm -hmm. So there are all of the six factions. Now, basic background of the story is um, the... Creation goddess Danya was uh, murdered by uh, demons, mm -hmm. and at the moment of her death, her soul shattered and was scattered across the cosmos. Okay. And um, these these portions of her god essence uh, are trapped in the uh, moment of her death. Right. So uh, adventurers can find these uh, celestial vortexes. Mm -hmm. Uh, enter them and try to uh, consume the god anima which is inside. Ah, I see. But it's it's rather risky because um, the the anima is trapped in the moment of its death, mm -hmm. so it can drive whoever is trying to consume it mad. You know, I say eccentric when people call me mad, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a very dangerous path, but yeah. by doing so, a person can reach be elevated to the level of a god. You know, if someone asks you if you're a god, you say, yes. <laughs> so it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's attractive, but only mm. the, the greatest heroes in the world are yeah. a, uh, able to achieve it. And they're and, called god questers. Okay, and so the, the main leaders of our different warbands then, they are all god questers? No, not all of them, but some of them are. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, uh, let's start working through the, the six main factions that are currently there. So who do we right. have? So, uh, first of all, we have Bane Brood. Okay. Um, that's... Oh, uh, do we have them sure. here? Okay. Uh, this first one? Mm -hmm. uh, so this is our, our Bane Brood. Who are these guys? So, Bane Brood are... Um, essentially beastmen and barbarians. Okay. But they, it, it, again, it has a twist. Uh -huh. uh, there is this cosmic force of primal um, fury mm -hmm. uh, called the Urgast. And this, um, all of the Bane Brood were infected right. by this thing in eons past. It's a, it was a kind of psychic virus Ooh. which spread across the world. Okay. And the ones who were who survived it and were still infected became the dis the forerunners of the Bane Brood. I see. It, it I see. warped them mentally and physically. I see, and that's that's what we're seeing here with the uh, well. We've got a, an Ursa Pine at the front here, which mm -hmm. seems to be a cross between a gigantic bear and a porcupine. Yeah. Uh, we've got a, a shaman who doesn't look altogether human, mm -hmm. and then we've got some very demon esque sort of characters who have been twisted and shaped in different ways. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Okay, and uh, what's the main driving force behind the faction? So they are, when when the Urgast is also a, a, a kind of magical force, mm -hmm. and it swells, and there are pools of it, and when it uh, comes across, it can it it in it inflames them and makes them enraged and furious, mm -hmm. and then they go on a rampage. Their primary goal is to destroy civilization because they ah. believe that nature. Mm -hmm. in its truest form 
is uh, the law of the jungle, mm -hmm. the survival of the strongest, and they hate civilization because it's a twisted corruption of nature. But yeah, I suppose I can, I can see how that would be... You see, I can't say good or evil on mm -hmm. this because there's no way to say nature is evil. I mean, mm -hmm. like, a tornado hits, mm -hmm. that's not evil, that's just Mother Nature saying hello. Right. This is the, the, the kind of darker side, the mm. more... Um, uh, violent side of nature. Yeah. So that's what they embrace. Very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, would we jump to our next image yet? Yeah? Yep. Yeah. So okay. Halodynes. Okay, so uh, who are the Halodynes? Halodynes are our kind of fantasy Greek faction, mm -hmm. and they worship the gods, mm -hmm. uh, a pantheon uh, uh, who grant them quite strong magical powers. Of course. So every faction in Godslayer has three sub-factions. Okay. So we have, they're made up of the city-states, mm -hmm. who are traditional kind of um, Greek hoplites, yeah. uh, hill ogres, and models like that. Then we have the temple sub-faction. Mm -hmm. They are uh, they're the, the primary worshippers of the gods, and they have temple warriors, and Cerberus, and other mythological creatures. And then uh -huh. the third sub-faction is the Amazons. Okay. And they are mounted nomadic tribes. Ah, I see. And uh, in the, the image here, who, who all are we seeing? Because I'm, I'm seeing what I can mm -hmm. guess are some hoplites. Mm -hmm. uh, Here's a god quester. Uh, in the middle. Halodyne god quester. Yes. Here's a priestess. Uh, on the left, yeah. Yep. This over here is a centarch. Uh-huh. And you can see the Cerberus up top right. Yeah, very nice take on Cerberus. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of people, whenever they imagine Cerberus, they imagine this big, huge, gigantic creature. It doesn't have to be that. You know, it's, it's a nice take on it. Yeah. And what are the, the main driving forces behind this faction, then? What is their, their sort of, you know, ethos that drives them forward? Okay, so the gods um, created a, uh, a pawn on Earth who was their emperor, mm -hmm. and kind of like Alexander the Great. Yeah. And he spread their culture across the world. I see. Uh, but that was about a thousand years ago, and since then it's collapsed. Ah. And they're kind of fractured mm -hmm. nations and um, uh, religious states. Okay. Kind of like the successor states of Ale after Alexander. Yeah. So it's kind of a mix of like ancient Greek, classical Greek, mm. and Macedonian ah, style. Ah, okay. Okay. Well, so they, they, are, they, they were a glorious culture. Um, they've fallen, but now they're kind of research, making a resurgence as well. I see. And is that due to the, the god questers within the actual the faction themselves who are going out attempting mm -hmm. to regain this godly power? Yeah, partly that, and because the gods have um, a, a, a new uh, group of hero spirits mm -hmm. has entered the cosmos and is now... Uh, been born and mm -hmm. come of age. Oh, I see, yeah. I see. A uh, very interesting faction. This one is one that I'm actually quite curious about because mm -hmm. I, I do love my, my ancient Greek like movies and stories and stuff like that, the Greek tragedies, things like that. Okay. I've really been delving deep into those mm. recently. Mm. Uh, let's see who we have next. Who is this faction? That's Bane Brood again. Ah, more okay. Bane Brood. Is this yeah. new Bane Brood? Yes, that's, that's coming with the Kickstarter. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, I can tell you a little. This is um, this is the starter box uh -huh. for Bane Brood. Ah, okay. And uh, who all are we seeing within the image? So this is the Bale King. Okay, big uh, guy in the middle. Yep, yeah. he's uh, a bit like a super cyclops. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm kind of getting you know Eye of the Beholder sort of mm -hmm. vibes just from the face there. Right. He's based on Celtic um, Balor mm. myth. Yeah. And then around him, who do we have? These are uh, Fomorian Gorgard. Uh -huh. uh, they come with uh, two weapons, or you, they come with shield and, and weapon. Nice. Yeah. And the, the guy on the, uh, the balcony? Yeah, that's the Stormhorn Stagator. Uh -huh. He's a, a frenzied berserker beastman. Rocking around with twin axes? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. got to be a berserker right there. Kind of gives it away with the twin axes. <laughs> okay, uh, moving along, uh, do we have more original, or is this another new so one? So this is new uh, Halodyne subfaction. Uh-huh. So, uh, starter box coming out in the Kickstarter. We have um, Amazon Pathfinder uh -huh. character, the Matriarch, a new Warlord for the faction, uh -huh. and the Amazon Peltists unit. I see. I'm, I'm getting real mixed vibes of like Roman and Greek feelings to this. Mm -hmm. Would this be correct? Just from, from what I'm seeing, some of the designs? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. I love some of the new poses and stuff you're throwing here. There's a nice sense of motion to them. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, is this more new stuff, or are we on okay, older this is, stuff? This is Morton's. Morton's, so, okay. So this is the starter box for the Morton's. Uh-huh. Uh, now, this faction are, is the Godslayer equivalent of Romans. Uh-huh. So, uh, they have a sub-faction, which is um, essentially legions, mm -hmm. and kind of like uh, ancient Rome. But there's also two other sub-factions, uh, the Technostratum, mm -hmm. which are um, alchemists. Mm -hmm. So they use poison, fire, tar, acid, gas, all, all of these the, weapons. All the lovely, lovely sciences yeah. of war. Yeah. Now, I deliberately kept it out of um, steampunk. Mm. It's all technically feasible. Okay. Yeah. Because the Romans were messing around with a lot of t uh, technology at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. They just didn't get this far. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's nice to take what would have been the original concept and see the progression. I mean, like, even Leonardo da Vinci designed mm -hmm. a tank. Right. You know, the Romans might have done it if they'd been allowed to continue. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So, third sub faction with the Romans is the um, Undead. Uh huh. Uh, this is made up of uh, necromancers called Mortifexes and ne Necromagi, mm -hmm. and they uh, have undead constructs put mm -hmm. together from different monsters, yeah. and also um, undead legions. Ah. So if a, if a legion is dishonored, flees the battlefield or something like that, they can be ritually uh, executed and oh. raised uh, as undead to serve the emperor in the afterlife. Okay, so uh, note to self, if I'm ever in the Roman legions, don't run. <laughs> Okay, they they sound like a very cool faction. I'm yeah. I'm loving the the very classical Roman designs we're seeing here, mm -hmm. but I am seeing some twist to it. There's a lot more chainmail I'm seeing on the actual the sculpts than I would have imagined the originals would have had. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, some if you go, it depends on the period. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, not a the traditional kind of lorica segmentata. Yeah, this was only in use for about 150 years. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, somebody's sure to correct me on that. <laughs> But, well, you see, here's the thing. You're going historical, yeah. but it's your history, so yeah. what you say goes. Yeah. So uh, these are provincial auxiliaries, uh -huh. so they're not as well equipped as the legionnaires. Mm -hmm. The the Morton legionnaires, they do have the Lorica segmentata, yeah. but these are, uh, are auxiliaries, so we dress them a little bit differently. Okay. And up at the top there, you can see the um, the prefect, yes. auxiliary prefect, and the cornican, mm -hmm. who is the musician. Oh, I see. Okay, uh, next one then. Uh, who do we have here? So this is Nordgard. Uh, now, Nordgard is our Viking faction. Vikings, you say? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not just uh, regular Vikings. It, mm -hmm. They have dwarves. Uh, dwarves, you say? Yes. <laughs> getting more sold. <laughs> so Viking humans, Viking dwarves, yeah, Viking yeah. ogres, oh, Viking nice. giants. Nice. Yeah. And uh, well, this faction, what is what is the driving force for them? Well, they're um, they were created by two demigod brothers, mm -hmm. one of whom was uh, chose to go the dwarven side, uh -huh. and one who chose to go the mortal side. Ah, I see. And they founded this kingdom, which was uh, made up of both dwarves and humans and mm -hmm. ogres. Um, so they're, uh, like, like the Halodines, they're worshipping some gods, but they're not so deep into the gods. Okay. They're more into the steel. Well, you know, a good bit of iron never does a, <laughs> a bit of that harm. Yeah, so they, uh, they have um, dwarves who have the highest technology in, in metallurgy. Yeah. But we're not going like the usual typical dwarven direction. Yeah. It's very much in Viking dwarves. I, I kind of like the, the vibe that you would get from Viking Dwarves, because that's where the original mythology for a dwarf comes from. Exactly. And if I remember correctly, dwarves weren't always short in North mythology. They were mm. actually more human-esque looking, mm. which was actually something quite interesting. Mm. Now, I do love the designs that I'm seeing here. Okay. You've got some very classical Viking like helmets and armor yeah. and pieces going on, yeah. but the, the central character at the front here with the, the raven cloak, with okay. the ravens flying off it, is mm -hmm. very, very cool. Yeah, so this is the uh, raven witch spirit seer. Uh-huh. This is the uh, starter box for Wave 2, coming uh -huh. in the Kickstarter. Okay. These are uh, Viking Ogres here. Ah. So these are 50 millimeter miniatures. Nice. Yeah. Over there you have the Gestir Captain. Uh -huh. He's um, 
like a kind of guy who roams around and mm -hmm. takes up uh, for a, a different Jarl whenever yeah. he likes and does his dirty work. Okay, so he's basically Viking for hire. Yeah, exactly. Right. Awesome. And these are regular Huskarls. Yes. The back. The, the um, Spirit Seer, mm -hmm. Raven Witch, is a uh, spellcaster for the faction. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping we're going to see lots of nicely tuned like ice spells and stuff from this faction. Yeah, there will be stuff like that. It's nice. uh, it's also pretty much kind of um, Norse mythological um, spirit magic. Nice. Because they had lots of spirits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going in that direction. That's going to be quite cool. All right, uh, next up. Ooh. Troglodytes. Something... They, they've got a bit of an oriental feel to these. Yeah, these are based on Mongols. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. In the, for the design. Mm -hmm. So troglodytes, uh, they, there are different elemental races in the mm -hmm. world. So earth, fire, water, and... Um, air? Air. Yep. <laughs> and a fifth, fifth element, shadow. Ah, okay. So shadow is the balancing element, mm -hmm. and it turns out that uh, humans are, are, are a dangerous, perilous threat to the balance of the cosmos. Wait, humans are dangerous? Oh, yes. Never. Never. <laughs> we would never be dangerous, would we, everybody? So yeah, they, we would. they have to be culled. Ah, okay. Right. So um, they're not a very formalized faction. Mm. Uh, it's, it's they don't have, like, it's not uh, a fake kind of ridiculous thing. Mm -hmm. It's just their background philosophy mm -hmm. that, they, that humans need to be yes. culled. Yes. Yeah, because they're a threat. It's, of course. They've been around for thousands of years before humans were even created. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go with Mongol style for them. Yeah. The, um, these are the standard trolls. We yep. also have kind of feral uh, mm -hmm. trolls without armor and a bit more crazed. Mm -hmm. Then there's uh, gnolls, which is our kind of goblinoid yep. sort of faction. Yep. And also shadow trolls. Ah. Shadow trolls. They're they're more elemental. Mm -hmm. So these um, are shadow elemental creatures, mm -hmm. but the shadow trolls are more elemental. So they more yeah. recently come into the cosmos mm -hmm. from the plane of shadow. I see. I see. Uh, well, I mean, like, the the design for these is really nice, and it's nice to see someone taking trolls. Because I mean, I imagine mm -hmm. a troll. Mm -hmm. I don't think fine craftsmanship or anything like that. I'm mm -hmm. imagining barbarian when mm -hmm. I think troll. Okay. So to actually see something with really nice craftsmanship and stuff to the, the armor, the mm -hmm. weapons, something that actually feels like there's a, a full-on high society culture behind it all, is yeah. quite nice. Yeah, it's a rather feudal society. Mm -hmm. And they have a warrior code and mm -hmm. things like that. And they have, there's also a nomadic side to it, to mm -hmm. the tribes as well, but that's mostly for the gnolls. Nice. All right, and then we have one more image here. Uh, ooh, who are these guys? So this is the wild folk. Uh -huh. That's our Celtic style faction. This is the starter box for Wave Two coming in Kickstarter. Uh huh. We have the uh, warlord here. Uh huh. And he's a god quester. Of course. Uh, we have the Riastrad warp warrior. Okay, the big dude. Yeah. So this is based on the uh, Irish legends of Cuchulain. Mm hmm. Uh, and this well, is it's the... uh, Cuchulain. Oh, sorry. The pronunciation. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's all right. I got called out recently. I I got a. What was it? Oshin, uh, I think, was the actual pronunciation of a, a, a legendary warrior from the Irish Cycles. Mm -hmm. Got the name wrong on camera. I'm mm -hmm. ashamed. I'm Irish. I should know this. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I feel fine being corrected in Ireland on an Irish name. It's okay. <laughs> they, they are very cool looking. Are they based on the Fianna? Uh, yeah, partly. I mean, these guys are uh, Wode brothers, mm -hmm. and they have this um, barbed spear. Yeah. Which is also from Irish legend. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm I'm looking for a shillelagh and not seeing one. <laughs> so, they also have three sub factions. Mm -hmm. The first one is the general typical tribes. Yeah, which is what these guys mostly are. Yep. Um, and they are uh, rather more the the shootiest faction, let's say. Ooh, the wild folk. Um, they they're not. Just shooting though they they do like ambushes and and melee as well yeah, yeah. like ancient Celtic culture did of course yeah so we have um, yeah the tribal sub faction mm -hmm. then there's the Fianor, which is uh, the shootiest sub faction mm -hmm. they're kind of nomadic yeah and they they have all armed with bows or ah. some kind of missile weapon uh, slingshot will do <clears throat> yeah 
So the third sub-faction is the Tuathan, mm -hmm. and they are dedicated to um, the rebirth of the goddess, mm. the creation goddess. So part of her essence mm -hmm. uh, filtered down into the uh, spiritual anima force, which uh, is within nature. Mm -hmm. So they're, all of the wild folk are kind of nature worshippers. Yeah. Nature worshipping Celtic yes. uh, shooty people, let's say. Okay. And, but the, the Tuathan are the extremists, mm -hmm. so they bind their souls to nature. Uh -huh. And they are reborn, and they have three different uh, aspects. There's birth, growth, and death. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are death warriors, mm -hmm. there are life priestesses, yes. and there are uh, change, change warriors like this guy, yes. the Hulan. Yes, you got it. Exactly. <laughs> the Riastrad are, are the metamorphic mm. uh, people of that subfaction. Okay, I would be very curious to get a go with these. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very curious about these now. Now, we do actually have some of the miniatures here in the studio with mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we can, could you maybe pick out some of the, the cool new ones that are coming for the Kickstarter? Because I assume the main thrust for the Kickstarter is mm -hmm. to expand the ranges for the different factions, yeah? Right, right. So um, we've seen them all on the, on the uh, screen. Oh, but there's, there's nothing that beats actually having a miniature in your hand. Yeah. Oh, and he's not metal. No, that one's resin. So is there a mixture of metal and resin coming in mm. the Kickstarter, or are you going to get mostly resin? It's 98% metal. Okay. Yeah. So okay. only the big creatures are resin. Okay. All right, well, this is our, our guy here. So, mm -hmm. oh, yes, the paint job on these is lovely. Did you do the paints yourself, or did you reach out to a, <laughs> a firm? Yes, we have painters. <laughs> very, very nice work. So who is this guy again? That's the Bale King. Uh huh. So he comes, he's a uh, warlord for the Bane Brood, mm -hmm. and he has three different cards, three different profile cards. Ah. So he can be a warlord for each of the sub factions. That's very nice to have. Okay, and next we have That's this the guy Stormhorn Stagator, the Berserker. Mm -hmm. I love the proportions that you have between the actual the weaponry and the, the actual creature itself, because the weapons are just about in the right scale. Mm -hmm. And then. You imagine this guy is bigger than the average human, so the, there is just that, that little bit there, okay, this feels like it was properly made for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, who else do we have that would be very cool to show off? Okay, so, um, this. Ooh. Yes. I also, uh, have, I have also have a few, few from the existing range. Okay, well, if we, if we want to show some of the existing too. Yeah. Uh, so this was our, our big change warrior, yeah. and you see what I mean about the proportion? This feels like on an everyday he might be a normal sized human, so he carries normal sized human weapons, but then he changes and all of a sudden his weapons are a little bit dinky in his hands. That's his human oh. form. Oh, I see. Okay, so you get both, both models in uh -huh. the box. Yeah. One is the regular human form and this is the warped form. I see, I see. I love just how you've actually played with the proportions of the weapons from whenever he's normal to whenever he is in full. <laughs> right. As you can see, he's weapons. got exactly the same weapons. Yeah, the weapons are the exact same models. scale. Yeah. That's really, really nicely done. And then you've tossed me this character. Oh, I'm That's, seeing a banshee here. Mm -hmm. That's a banshee. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the most terrifying creatures of Irish legend for me, because <laughs> my grandparents used to talk about them. Ah. <laughs> uh, and then, oh, hello. So that's um, one of the warlords from Wave 1. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the Tuathan guys, the ah. death death priest. Called very, the very nice. Lord I of Decay. Love the amount of detail that you've managed to cram in on the miniature. And then, so, for the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. just for my own curiosity, what are the, the main points of what you're trying to achieve with it? Okay, so... Godslayer's been building steadily for the last four years, yeah. but we never really had the resources to create enough releases fast enough mm -hmm. to make the game take off. Yeah. But now it's been four years, we have a really good range of stuff already mm. now available. Um, so I think it's the, r the right time mm -hmm. to kick it into the next gear. Yeah. So Kickstarter will um, make the game... Uh, more accessible and better known. Mm -hmm. We're doing quite a bit of advertising. Of course. Um, it's releasing a, a battle box for the game. Mm -hmm. So is this is a, a two-player starter kit? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so, so it consists of the rulebook. Yeah. Um, 
Is this right here? Yeah, that's what it'll look like. So who versus who? So it's it's Halodynes versus Banebrood. Okay. So if you look at the Let's Play videos we play we shot. Uh yeah, I believe we've we've shown a uh, a round breakdown at this point, mm -hmm. and we have a Let's Play in the can that will be going out later. Right. So that is essentially the war, what you get in this box. Ah, I the see. only things that are that that we added mm. was um, the animated statue uh -huh. and um, Cyclops. Ah, okay. Everything else on the table was in this box. I see. I yeah. see. So basically, everything you need to play in one box mm -hmm. is what you're aiming yep. at with this. Two, two complete war bands mm -hmm. uh, and the rule book. Nice. Very nice. Uh, and I assume all of the, the stat cards and stuff you need as well, or of are those going to be like stretch goals? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, all the stat cards are in there, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, an easy start rules and mm -hmm. uh, play sheet. So everything you need. Perfect, yeah. perfect. And then, so you're building on this, mm -hmm. and then you're building on each faction and expanding in, and we've seen That's some of those right. in the images that yeah. we've had. So as you, as you saw in the images, mm -hmm. um, we're releasing a Wave 2 starter box, for all of the six factions. Oh, I see. So that's bringing also a lot of new models. Yeah. Um, and then, um, in addition to that, we have special deals for the Wave 1. Ah. Uh, so, as I mentioned, every faction has three sub-factions. Yeah. So we have a deal for each sub-faction. I see. So uh, have... Do I have images of this? Yep. Uh, Those. Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. So this is the Wave 1 deal. Though. Yeah. So as you can see, this is the Bane Brew deals here. Yeah, on the We've left. Got uh, three different sub factions, uh -huh. and each one has a warlord mm -hmm. um, with a unique uh, profile card, ah. which is being previewed first on Kickstarter. Oh, I see. So it's like uh, the regular uh, warlord profile card, mm -hmm. but they've been they're a, an actual person from the Godslayer universe, yes. a personality. And they have slightly different skills and yeah. talents and uh, statistics. I see. So um, it's a new take on the existing warlords. It, it makes them, you know, it's, it's a completely new model to be played. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Right. So, uh, and these are available uh, for the moment only in the Kickstarter. I see. So anyone who hasn't gotten into God Slayer yet, yeah. this is a perfect way to start. Get one of these... Um, yeah, so this is your one perfect jump-off point. Yeah, get one of these deals. Yeah, this so, is this is one thing I like for games, is whenever they give you really simple jump-off points. There are a number of times I've looked at games in the past where I get really confused whenever I'm looking to jump in. Mm -hmm. So having something that's just a complete package that I can say, okay, mm -hmm. uh, I love the look of that, let's mm -hmm. grab that, and off we go. Yep. It's really nice to have. Any one of these deals is a yep. perfect package to start with. Mm -hmm. And then, so this is Bane Brood on the left. Mm -hmm. Who's on the right? This is the Halodyne's three uh -huh. sub-faction deals. Uh-huh. So, uh, it, normally this is the Demarcon Warlord. Uh -huh. This guy is Tarkiles the Avenger. Uh -huh. uh, he's a special character in Godslayer background. Mm -hmm. And the Oracle of Arcadia and Andromeda of uh, Seraphia. Oh, I see. Now, you see, for, for them, if I was going to grab one of these, I'd be kind of biting my knuckle. Because I, I see the animated statue in one mm -hmm. of them, but I'm seeing like Amazon Warriors in mm -hmm. the other with mm -hmm. hoplites. Right. So, what should I get? Yeah. You should get both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's how it is. That's the perfect way to start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next ones, who do we have here? Okay, so we here we have Wave 1 Bane Brood uh, sub-factions. Uh -huh. uh, so this is, uh, sorry, this is Morton's, uh -huh. right? Um, this is the Undead. So you have this, uh, the uh, creature here. Yes. Undead creature called the Moloch. Uh -huh. uh, Legio Mortem, two Necromagi, and the Mortifex. Uh -huh. um, then we've got the Technostratum and the Legions. Over here, Nordgard, yep. three sub factions. Uh, one, this one is the uh, dwarven um, guilds, mm -hmm. humans and ogres, and dwarven clans. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have to say, out of the the ones here, it would be the the dwarven one that would be really tempting me, just because you know, dwarven at heart. Have you seen the beard? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then our our last two here. Okay, so this is the wild folk. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Theonar. Subfaction deal, uh huh, and uh, the Tuathan subfaction deal and the tribal subfaction deal. Okay, each again with a special, unique personality wardlord with yep. its own uh card which has never been released before. Mm -hmm. And then the final one this is the troglodytes. Ah, okay, so uh, typical uh, trolls, yep, 
the gnolls, which is our kind of goblins, and yeah. these are the shadow trolls. Uh, I love the element of you've got to the, the warlord and the, the sort of heroes there. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. No. So, also coming in the Kickstarter, we've got uh, a new sub faction. Mm -hmm. uh, Wait, another faction? Yes. Oh, you have me curious, sir. <laughs> we have more coming, but the next one being released now is Mercenaries. Ah. So, these guys, of course, can be used with any mm. faction together with them. Nice. So basically this is, if you're already into Godslayer and you want to grab something completely different, mm -hmm. go after these guys, yeah? yeah? Or you can use them as your own, as a, a standalone sub-faction. Mm. That's nice to have. Yeah, so they'll be, they're coming out as stretch goals. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have lots of other stuff as stretch goals, avatars, Ooh, which what? are really high-powered miniatures for larger games. Okay, and are they someone who's actually consumed some of the gods' power, or...? No, they're representatives of the gods. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, and they only have one turn of activation. So they appear on the board. Yeah. They have one turn, but they are pretty devastating in that one turn. <laughs> so they're, they're definitely worth their points. So you have essentially put in a nuclear weapon into everybody's arsenal. Yeah, but of course it's, it's completely balanced. So of course, of don't course. Don't worry about that. <laughs> well, you know, if everybody has them. Uh, yeah, no, no. I mean, the, the thing is, it's only usable for one mm. round. Yeah, and I'm guessing you're having to pay out the points to take of course, care of it. Of course, of course. Uh, it's a high points model Yeah, to use for one round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a little fun for large games. You can only use them in games which are 500 points or more. Mm. So it's completely 100% balanced. Don't worry about that. Okay, and yeah. well, what is the, the average point size that you would like to play your games of God's Lair? Yeah, I typically play 350 to 450 points. Uh -huh. The larger, the better. Yeah. Um, up to, let's say, 500. Mm -hmm. That's a nice mm, three-hour game, okay. if, once you know the rules yeah. and, and you're familiar with the models. Mm. Um, you can play with um, just a few models, mm -hmm. 100 points. Uh, 160 points is, is the Wave 1 starter box yeah. level. Uh, what's common in tournaments is 300 points. Okay, nice. Yeah. So, but if you if you want like an afternoon game, then mm -hmm. you you want to play like four hundred and fifty five hundred points. Cool, cool. All right. Well, I, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Something I always ask, and I'm sure everybody at home knows what I'm about to ask. Uh, we always love giving away prizes on the shows whenever mm -hmm. we're talking about new games and giving people a chance to get into new games. Right. So, would you perhaps be interested in giving something away for everybody? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, well what would you so like? uh, we'll be giving away starter boxes and okay. rule books. Okay, what, two-player starter bundle, or...? Uh, we can do a two-player starter bundle. Okay. And we can do uh, two um, starter boxes Ooh. and rule books. Okay, yeah. so four prizes total? Three. That's three total. Three? Oh, uh, so, oh yeah. So a starter Learn box... Learn to count, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> one battle box. Okay. Right, the two-player big Oh, you're going to give away that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, one of those. Okay. Uh, two starter boxes and rule books. Okay, awesome. Uh, well, uh, everybody, if you're going to want to win, get your comments in below. Uh, I tell you what, I know exactly what they ask everybody to comment on for this one. Tell us your favorite mythical sort of ancient society mm. that you would love to see turn up in Godslayer in the future. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure you would love to hear what people would love to see. Yeah, we have some plans. We have stuff in the pipe. Ooh, two, two new factions, in well, fact. Don't be a tease. So, uh, <laughs> one is Stygians. That's the kind of evil creatures from Greek mythology. Uh -huh. So, Medusas and very Gorgons and yeah, lots yeah, yeah. and lots of different uh, monstrous creatures. Uh-huh. So they're worshippers of darkness. Mm -hmm. Then we also have um, our next faction will be fantasy Persians. Okay, cool. God Slayer Persians. Okay, that could be very, very cool. I'm, yeah. I'm curious because uh, the way you design your miniatures is very, very nice. I love the way the designs work and the flow of them. So I'm curious to see how you bring that from imagination to concept to actual yeah. miniature on the tabletop. Yeah, I was very impressed with 300. <laughs> visually you know? so, oh i'm seeing so it might going. be going in in somewhat in that direction oh yeah, yeah. I, I can dig it i can dig it all right well uh david thank you very much for joining us is yeah, there anything uh, is there anything we forgot uh no we covered it all all right well uh everybody you know what to do get into those comments if you would like to win yourself some god slayer goodies mm -hmm. we will move on we'll see you again another time